everyone. <laughs> for those of you who haven't been here for the last 12 minutes, 13 minutes watching us struggle, um, I'm J.D. Hanshu, um, and I'm here to talk to my good friend and uh, frequent partner in crime, Tyler Klein, about a really exciting uh, project that we're putting together that uh, hopefully some of you all, if you're not already involved, will get involved with. But to start us off, for those of you who maybe don't know Tyler, um, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah. Totally. Um, so first and foremost, I'm a composer. Um, I primarily primarily write um, chamber music, but I, I do love writing an orchestra piece when I can, uh, incorporating acoustic and electronic elements, uh, depending on the piece. Uh, composing is not the only thing I do. I, I somehow have hobbies um, that we can maybe talk about later. But um, I, uh, I'm a big advocate for contemporary music. I try to, to be an advocate beyond just creating contemporary music. Um, so my partner, Susanna, and I have a uh, new music series, uh, an event series called Taiwan New Music. And uh, we pair music by living composers with um, local uh, food, local, local beer, local craft beverages, you know, that stuff of that nature. And we are currently on hiatus because we moved. And then right as we were planning our new edition of Tewa, uh, the pandemic hit. So we're not going to uh, ask people to sit in a restaurant and listen to new music because we don't want to do that. But we're planning, planning new stuff as things open back up and get safer again. Um, I also host uh, classical music on Classical WSMR, a radio station out of Tampa, Florida. And um, in addition to just kind of being a general host, I, um, I produce and host a uh, contemporary music program uh, two hours a week called Modern Notebook, where I also try to um, al almost always program music by living composers. Um, because I love love uh, tagging people on Instagram and, and seeing that they they see that their music is getting played. So anyway, that's uh, a little bit about me. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. JD and I have known each other for at least a decade, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. When, when did you start school? 20, uh, 2000, oh, 2009. 2009. Yeah. And then I think Dr. Baker, uh, Stacy Baker, our, uh, for those who don't know much about me. I'm a trombone player, but I started as a euphonium player. I still play from time to time. Um, I remember she put us in contact uh, a little bit before even. So I think, yeah, yeah. we've known each other for some time, um, which is great. So um, with that said, kind of moving naturally through this, um, <laughs> you do have a background in low brass performance, right? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more, uh, more about the piece uh, specifically the the consortium specifically here shortly but um, in terms of your background and low brass performance euphonium performance primarily but I know you've played trombone and tuba and marching euphonium I don't consider that an instrument but I digress <laughs> um, how do you think this kind of has influenced your composition your style your approach to composition over the years and things like that Oh, that's, um, that's a really great and interesting question. Yeah, I, um, I started, well, I, I started out in middle school band as a trumpet player, as a lot of euphonium players tend to seem to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I switched to euphonium or baritone in, in eighth grade. And, and of course, I played all the way through my first semester of my master's degree at uh, the University of South Florida, I played in the tuba euphonium ensemble. Um, with uh, Jay Hunsberger, who's who's also an amazing person, um, and then uh, th there was like a scheduling conflict or something, and then I could I couldn't like take that ensemble because of um, composition. Uh, so you know you do do what you got to do. But um, to answer your question about the compositional process, I mean, a lot of my earliest music obviously was for low brass. I have a piece I wrote for Justin Crowshore, our, our friend who's in the chat, I think. Um, my chat's over here, by the way. So if I look over here, I'm looking at comments um, uh, for trombone and piano. And actually, surprisingly, it's my only trombone and piano piece um, until now, I think. So, um, and, and then I wrote myself some music for euphonium and piano. And, um, so it's always kind of been, uh, I, I've always seen composing for low brass as kind of like a checkpoint almost like I will 
compose a piece for low brass and then I'll, I'll go out and do like a bunch of weird stuff and crazy whatever not low brass writing and then uh, i i tend to think that well i hope that i become a better composer doing all that stuff and then come back uh back to low brass and um i always feel like it's like visiting an old friend um as as kind of cheesy as that sounds but um kind of a way to really write for instruments um especially euphonium and trombone instruments that i know really well i can I can like finger along with the music and, and just like apply uh, my growth as a composer to this, um, to this kind of instrumentation. So I don't know if that's like really process related, but it's kind of how I think about it. So I guess it is. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. So um, when we talk about style um, and if, if you were tuned in, in the 30 minutes before everything went wrong. No, um, <laughs> in the 30 minutes before we were supposed to go live. Um, you you kind of heard a sampling of other pieces from your uh, from your past. Um, and so your style has changed uh, pretty considerably over the years if you go back through some of your really early things versus what you're doing now. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you describe your musical style now versus how that may have been how that may, might have changed over the last five, 10 years. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I'm, I'm struggling to answer the question regarding style, but maybe aesthetic might be sure. there we go. Yeah. maybe a comparable word. And I think, um, I guess the best way to talk about my aesthetic is talk, in talking about my, my first pieces I composed like 12 years ago for for low brass, um, I thought about music in a very melody and accompaniment or melody and harmony kind of way. And um, I thankfully don't, thankfully for me um, as a as a composer, um, I, I thankfully don't think about things in those ways anymore. I think more about um, texture. I think more a lot about gesture in music. Of course, it's all like with the, the chromatic scale all the notes of the chromatic scale. Um, but I, I think that, um, I don't know, I, I guess style, different styles manifest in different ways in my pieces. Um, sometimes uh, across a piece, it's like, I don't want to, I, I don't like the word polystylistic, but I guess that's one way you could describe it. But I, I feel like the aesthetic is really consistent in that um, I'm really interested in kind of these blurred textures of the ways that um, rhythms don't quite fit into the overall pulse or rhythms across different instruments don't fit. So it's like a really kind of messy um, kind of texture. And, and um, I, I wouldn't, I guess technically my music is atonal in that there's no tonal center, but um, I'm really interested in, in kind of um, establishing a, a kind of tonal realm um, and then like putting like a dissonant note in there and it's like, oh, that's kind of unusual and, um, hopefully nice. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then of course, gesture being like kind of the shape of the music. So, um, and the shape of the music and in individual instruments and in in across an ensemble. So I, I think about that a lot as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, you know, I, I like what you said about not necessarily having a, a tonal center the way we would think about, you know, five, one, getting back to, uh, you know, good old C major. Um, and I, I can agree with that. I think it's, it's always, when we think about atonal music, atonal music, how you choose to pronounce it. Um, we think a lot about Schoenberg or Berg or Webern or, you know, things like that. But, that's not necessarily the case, right? I mean, you, you've, in the past, you've used some of these same techniques, um, not necessarily the 12 tone system, but you've used some right. of these same techniques, but um, it's in a really, I, I've always thought it was a really interesting way that it, it's, it's kind of a journey. You know, you're know, you never entirely certain where you're gonna end up, yeah. um, <laughs> right. but uh, it's always kind of pleasing when you get there. So, awesome. Mm. All right, so um, let's transition a little bit here specifically to this piece, uh, this consortium. Um, so this is actually, and we were just talking about this before the stream, um, this is our second 
consortium together. Yeah. Um, and actually, it is almost to the day, six years after yeah. our last one. Uh, yesterday was, uh, I got the Facebook on this day notification. Um, so in terms of this piece specifically, what's, and maybe this is a loaded question, um, which are the best kind of questions for this. What's the concept behind it? What are, where are we going with it? So I'm uh, I'm going to ask you to put a link to the page in the chat while I explain this because maybe it'll be a good thing to reference because sure. I might get like way off track here. Um, so in talking to JD about this piece a month or two ago, um, this idea of like a low a low brass piece came up pretty much immediately, and so JD and I both you know we both played trombone and euphonium or trombone and tuba and so obviously there's a lot of overlap in what those instruments can do specifically from a range standpoint but like a register they can play the same notes exactly but also a lot like they that they can do um together so well, and a lot of things that they can't do the same like glissandos and stuff on trombone you can't really do that on a tuba um though i'm sure some people would argue with me like brett copeland he's watching so um anyway um so the idea of this piece ended up being um has ended up being uh, to write a piece where there's a solo line and that solo line can be played on tenor trombone bass trombone euphonium and tuba all four instruments it can be played comfortably you could just hang out on that solo line the whole time and probably be okay um because I think there's maybe about an octave and a half that would work really well on all the instruments. Um, and then create throughout the piece um, a lot of optional lines that extend into the upper registers for euphonium and tenor trombone and into the very low registers for tuba and bass trombone. So when, I, when JD and I were talking about this, he had the best word for it which was a choose your own adventure piece um because you could do that you could depending on what works for you what instrument you're playing your skill level um you could you could only play the kind of the the line that works on all the instruments or you could if you play tenor trombone you can take all those optional higher solo lines um that would be the same music as the not optional line obviously just an octave up or something um, or if you play tuba, you can play the lower ones. Or if you're if you're like a tuba player who wants to play really high notes, you can play the higher lines. If you are having an off day and you can't play the higher lines, you can you can play the lower lines. So it, it ends up being a, a situation which is really exciting to me, a, a piece where you can really just play it differently every time. But it's it's the same piece. I mean, it's not a different piece. It's just designed that way. Yeah. Well, and I think that's something, there's something really special about that too. We, we get, as performers, we get into a situation so many times, and I, I, I hope I'm not the only one that feels this way, where you revisit pieces over year, over the years, and every time you do, you, you start playing it a little differently. You mature, you, mm. um, you are exposed to different things, you start um, understanding things differently. I even noticed uh, listening to my recording of render from 2015 i guess um <laughs> six years ago yeah geez uh from 2015 i i've been working on the piece again uh recently and wow i played it really differently then than i am now um so it's you know this puts a really truly like massive difference that you can take you yeah know? um oh go ahead well, I, I, and I was going to add, it's not just I, the initial idea was this kind of um, registral mm -hmm. differences. But JD, we were talking once, and you said, "Well, you could also do optional lines for glissandos." So if you're there's an optional line where you can play a bunch of glissandos, and maybe you are a euphonium player who wants to be weird and play glissandos, you know. But you know, it, it's it's. Um, meant to be played by the trombone players playing this really easily so uh, and then and uh, you know the idea is that the piano part stays the same and depending on which 
line the solo player takes, you know, you could be a tuba player playing the very low part, and then suddenly the entire harmony of the piano part changes because you are creating a new bass tone underneath it. Whereas if you played it on or the upper line, it doesn't sound like that. So not only is it just like high, low, like you pick what you want to do, it, it, I want to make it a piece that in some ways the performer can make kind of compositional decisions, kind of, you know, I'm not going to give you that much control, but maybe because we talked about an aleatoric cadenza where it's just cell based and you put together a cadenza on your own. So, you know, it's kind of this idea that you really can decide, you can make decisions about how the piece is presented that maybe even myself as a composer, um, wouldn't have been able to conceive, which has been a, a, an, some part of an idea that I've had for a long time um, in my music. Yeah, and that's that's really interesting. Um, there are for you know for some composers that's the norm. You know, thinking about uh, you know aleatoric music and things like that. And I, I I think you've experimented with that some in the past as well. But mm. um, truly giving that much control over to a performer is uh, I guess sometimes a dangerous proposition. Um, so, um, in kind of a, in the same vein, when you have all of these different ideas, when you have all of these different, um, melodic lines, all these different things that can play in at the same time, um, or not at the same time necessarily, but interchangeably, how, how you, how are you going to approach the writing process to this? Uh, cause this is something that I'm very curious about. Like yeah. how, how does... How do you, you know, think of six different or three different, four different things that could happen at any given point? Um, kind of a branching narrative, if you will. Well, so the way I compose, I think is maybe can do, like I said earlier, I, I used to think of things as like melody with an accompaniment or melody and harmony. I think approaching this piece as like a melody with stuff going on underneath it might not like it might not work right so i think in thinking about the piece in more kind of registral and textural ways um and, and don't get me wrong i'm not gonna i don't plan to make this piece like extended technique city or a bunch of like kind of far out sounds or anything i want it to be like a, a really great recital piece that anyone would want to play but i think that it's, I'm not going to approach it like, okay, I'm going to write the solo line and then like an accompaniment. I think it's going to have to be almost like a short score, like a part that all the notes are there and then I'm I'm kind of moving them where they go and some end up in the piano and some end up in, um, in the low brass part and then kind of go from there. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be necessarily... Uh, yeah, you guys understand. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that, that's really interesting too. I mean, it, it this is this is very cool. I I, I can't think of many um, things that are similar to this in a way. Um, honestly, the 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 one thing that I've that keeps coming back is the um, I can't remember the name of it. It's the Justin. If you're still watching, you might know it off the top of your head. Um, the uh, the larger piece that the cage solo for sliding trombone came out of where it's really just all of these different mm -hmm. things that can be combined into one but even this is different because it's not as a suite it's not a you know it's it's very cool sorry I'm it's not it's not quite modular right um it is going to be there's a solo line and a piano line mm -hmm. um but what the soloist can do there's a lot of creativity you could approach it with controlled improvisation maybe that's the way to think. Maybe, about. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe so. <laughs> so, um, talking about more the uh, nuts and bolts part of this, um, for those who might have not been involved with a consortium before, um, what is a consortium, and how does it kind of differ from a normal commission that you might see? So, I love consortiums. I think this is my sixth or seventh one. I think. Um, and I try, I try different things in every one of them, um, which is probably how this crazy idea came about. But um, a consortium is a way of commissioning that is basically like, um, like crowdfunding, basically. Um, so 
in a normal commission, it's it's one party commissioning the composer <laughs> and probably paying, you know, upwards of a few thousand dollars. Um, and it, it, and that's not accessible for everyone. I I don't expect every performer who commissions me to be able to to pay thousands of dollars to do that. But with a consortium, it allows many people to pay a more reasonable amount. In this case, it's uh, in this consortium, it's seventy five dollars. Um, and you can you, you become a commissioner. You're listed in the score. Um, you can put it in your CV. Um, if you're a professional, uh, forty dollars. If you're a student uh, to join this consortium, and that's that's a lot more reasonable than twenty five hundred dollars for or, or like five thousand dollars for a fifteen minute uh, piece for trombone and and piano. So um, that's why I love consortiums because it, it opens up the possibilities of someone commissioning. Um, who may not have considered commissioning a piece before. Uh, I've done a lot of consortiums in the past where um, people will join and they'll say, this is my first time ever commissioning a composer. Um, that's really exciting to me because, I, you know, it's important. we got to keep, not, not just me, you know, whatever, but we have to keep commissioning composers and, and new music has to keep being made um, to keep this art more alive than... Um, I don't know, pulling music from IMSLP, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. But um, the consortium really allows a lot of people to get involved. A lot of people get to play the piece. Um, I try to make sure that there's other benefits that people can have a year of exclusivity. So no one else except the commissioners can play the piece um, and, and and things of that nature. So um, I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I'm all about consortiums. Um, I, I hope more people do them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's, um, I think one of the cool things as well is you, especially with this one, um, you get a little bit of a sense of ownership with it. Yeah. Um, because I know one of your things that you'd like to do that we're, once the, the, the ball gets really rolling is, getting feedback from performers um right we were you know if there's something that you send out that people look at and they're like oh god that's that's, that's not playable uh that's right. that's not gonna work which thankfully um as someone with a as much of a pedigreed history in uh low brass performance sorry my, yeah. <laughs> my uh, messenger is blowing up here um i don't think that would be necessarily the case but you get a little bit of a again a sense of ownership some you know you you've been really great about taking ideas at least in the the pieces i've worked with you on which other than render we've done several pieces together yeah. um yep. it's it's not just a take my money and go do what you're going to do it's it's a little bit more um yeah it's a little bit more of a, a community if you will Right. So, um, lastly, about the consortium, what what do we get out of it? Um, you know, other than just a cool new piece of music that we can play, um, what 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 does our how far does our money go when the in this? So, um, so it with this consortium. Um, actually, I need to pull up the link myself <laughs> because I forget. With this consortium. Uh, Commissioners will receive performance exclusivity where only the people who join can can perform it for a certain amount of time. And the time frame for this one is, where is it? There it is. Um, until January 2023. So the idea being that, you know, things are weird right now with the pandemic. I, I did a consortium a year, like right before the pandemic, and the piece still hasn't been performed because it's a pandemic. So... You know, with that in mind, I, I want to make sure that um, there's no pressure to get your performance in the exclusivity period, you know, in a year or something. So January 2023 20, gives um, an, an entire academic school year plus a semester um, to to perform the work. Um, so that's that's one of the one of the things that people um, people get. And I let, guess. Me, let uh, me jump in here really quickly yes. too and say. Um, typically with these, the, the lead commissioner, which in this case would be me, would have, you know, the, the premiere rights and all that thing. I'm not doing that in this. We're not doing that. Whoever is, whoever performs it first, performs it first. You get to be the, the world premiere, not to necessarily encourage you to rush through and like 
<laughs> uh, try to learn the piece really fast. But again, we're we're trying for a really democratized, um, community driven approach to this. We we want people who are ready to perform it um, to be able to perform it. That's the awesome thing about this. So. Well, and and on that note, um, you know, we 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 currently have ten consortium members, and so. While there's not technically like a sing, well, there would be a single world premiere. Um, it open a consortium again. Uh, one of the great things about a consortium is it opens up the possibility of a bunch of regional premieres. So right now we have um, com- consortium members who live in Georgia, who live in New York State, who live in Kentucky, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia. Um, probably forgetting one. Um, Arizona is one. So. You know, there can be a Kentucky premiere, there can be a Georgia premiere, an Arizona premiere, there can be a Florida premiere, you know, it, I mean, the list goes on. Um, so that's, that's a really, um, also another exciting thing. I mean, that's, that's something that people can brag about, <laughs> I even, suppose. Even then at this point, I believe uh, in Georgia, it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's me and uh, Dr. Bill Mann, who also yeah, that's right. taught both of us, um, yeah. who I live uh, about an hour away from. Um so beyond that, we so, could even have yeah. a bass trombone Georgia premiere and a tenor trombone Georgia premiere. Not not to split hairs that much, but there really is a lot of uh, <laughs> well, yeah flexibility. Right. In it. So um, in addition to the performance exclusivity, um, I'll send out regular compositional updates. I plan to start actually composing the piece in um, in July, and we'll finish it by September. Um, that's the plan. I'm a composer, so it might be more like October, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, but the plan is to start in July and hit the ground running. I think there's a lot of really great ideas here, and I'm, I'm excited to share ideas in the meantime as they come to me, as as me and JD discuss it with with the commissioners. Um, so as soon as you join, you're added to that list, and any email I send out from that point on, you'll receive. Um, and then finally, this is this is something new that I've never done before with a consortium, because I've written so much low brass music. Uh, it's like 20 pieces. <laughs> yeah. um, when a person joins, I will send you a Dropbox link with every low brass piece I've ever written um, for you to peruse the scores. And if you see anything that catches your eye that you'd like to play, um, I'll send you the performance materials. Um, and and, and no that's, extra charge, right? What's that? At no extra charge, right? No extra charge. No yeah. extra charge. That's just a benefit to joining. It doesn't include my tuba concerto because... Um, that thing's a monster <laughs> and I need to clean the, the music up. So, sure. <laughs> um, but that's the only reason. So. Yeah. Uh, you are right, Justin. That is crazy. Um, no, <laughs> which is it, very cool. Um, and actually looking, uh, looking back at it, I have it on my, uh, my desktop right now. We have Atlas, which is a uh, really fantastic um, trombone sextet that uh, you wrote for, I believe it was for the Morehead State Trombone Choir yeah. uh, with Bill Mann uh, when he was teaching there, as well as the quartet version of it, which, if I remember correctly, was premiered by uh, me, Justin, um, Danny Alford, and, oh gosh, I feel, Brad Myers, maybe, I feel like, at the uh, Great American Brass Band Festival. So that one's same piece, just four, four players and a whole lot more notes per person. Um, <laughs> Banter, which is a really, really, really fun piece for bass trombone and marimba that uh, I premiered with um, Jamie Vilsack. Uh, basic Research 1 for euphonium and electronics. Um, Flay, which you might have heard beforehand uh, for trombone and viola for Justin Crowshore. Flesh and Knot, which still needs to be performed at some point. A nice <laughs> trombone trio. A really, a really difficult trombone trio. <laughs> very difficult. Uh, very difficult. Um We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen at some point. Um, for those that wander, for euphonium and piano, and if I remember correctly, that was the one that you wrote for yourself. Um, yeah. And actually won the... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Trevin. Beautiful men on my Facebook swoon. Um, <laughs> hey, Trevin. <laughs> uh, Trevin's a good friend from uh, back in our Moorhead State days. Um, for those that wander, yeah, you, you wrote that for yourself. Um, fragments. I believe that was for Jake East, right? For Jake. So the fragments one and two, my pieces for euphonium are the most, um, I guess I would say experimental low brass music I've written. They are very, um, very out there. 
Um, and I think Jake has been the only person that's ever played them. But I, I'm proud of them. They're they're little miniature pieces, so. Yeah, they're fun. Um, in spite of thought and reason, we dream, which is a beautiful, beautiful piece that you uh, you wrote for Justin Crowshore, won the Camille composition contest that year, um, mm. and very recently you have uh, for me, and maybe for <laughs> other people who'd want to play it, uh, the, just finished a tuba slash bass trombone uh, transcription of it which is very exciting. Mm. Um, there's also Remaining Vestiges, which is a really, really beautiful uh, piece for tuba and piano. Render, which uh, we've talked about a few times uh, for bass trombone or tenor trombone and electronics. Uh, Salt Veins, which is one of your newer pieces, I believe 2018, mm. written for Some Assembly Required. Um, Cholong Park, Justin Crowshore, and Justin Stanley. Uh, really, really, really fun exciting piece i'm, I'm going to play that one at some point uh the rainy season clarinet and b flat euphonium and percussion vital dichotomies for double tube euphonium quartet who needs four when you can have eight and uh the wind carries relics for a uh, euphonium and piano so lots of really exciting stuff in that um in that grouping of uh, pieces that you get i probably should have shared all that but we don't want you to see it yet we want to want you to join then you can see the music yeah right yeah <laughs> so what we want. cool um and then lastly we'll kind of wrap things up here a little bit um other than this consortium which is you know obviously been the focus of all this but other than this consortium what else do you have going on right now so before i answer this question i don't think we've received a single question in the chat oh. so um so jd while i answer this question hopefully people will drop some uh questions about the piece or about me or us in the chat um, and you can keep an eye on it to make sure there's nothing like weird from Trevin. Uh, no, Trevin, I'm kidding. I love you. Uh, so what have I been up to um, these days? So I just finished a really, um, a really big piece for our friend Ronko Shimizu in Tokyo for her Music Grove project. Um, and it's a string quartet that is, um, I, I hesitate to say this, but um, credit where credit say, is due. But... I think I think it might be uh, the best piece I've ever written. So I can agree that's, with that. So I'm I'm excited to write new stuff now with the ideas I kind of came up on in that piece, um, and that's really about it. <laughs> so um, you know the pandemic has been like a really weird time, but I saw it as a, an opportunity to kind of um, step back. I've been catching up on this enormous backlog of stuff that have, has been on my back burner that I kind of just kept pushing off and doing new stuff and forgetting about. So I'm, I'm trying to catch up on a, a bunch of that stuff. Justin Crowshore and I, a, a few years ago, recorded um, some really awesome trombone electronics music, and I'm, I'm wrapping that up now. Um, and now that it's safe, I'm hoping we can get together and, and, and release some really gnarly trombone music here soon on Bandcamp. Um, so that's another thing I'm doing. Um, and, and other than that, um, you know, the, the I've, I've just, just been kind of like looking inward at myself and like I mentioned earlier, I, I have, um, maybe this was when my voice wasn't coming out of the computer. So maybe I didn't mention this earlier, but, um, I've been, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> that didn't happen, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been doing some hobbies. So, um, Susanna, my, my partner got, got us into ceramics. So I've been making a bunch of pottery since maybe August. And um, coincidentally, um, not really related to the project with Bronco, I've been learning Japanese. So um, just some like things that have helped me grow as a person, I guess, kind of, um, and any, I always believe that anything I do outside of um, composition is still informing my composition anyway. So I'm, I'm a firm believer in that any kind of music I listen to, any kind of art I consume, any kind of stuff I do, you know, it's all, it all matters. It all makes a difference in, in my music. So art that's informs a, that's life it. and life informs art. That's um, right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> great. So, um, still don't have any questions. Y'all are a quiet bunch. Um, and I realize now there might also be people who have gone back to the beginning 
and oh, yeah. um, are watching from there. So if you have any questions throughout this, and even if the video is not live anymore, let us know, drop it in the comments, and then one of us um, will repo uh, reply, not reply, uh, one of us will reply um, with the answer. Now, lastly, um, and I'm going to leave this up while we uh, go on mute and commiserate about that first 12 minutes that uh, <laughs> that was rough. Um, but um, I'm going to leave up the link uh, where you can go and read more about the consortium, as well as a QR code if you're savvy and want to just take a snapshot, because I know uh, I don't like typing in everything, and it's really hard to leave a hyperlink in a video. You can also find the link down in the chat uh, a few different places. But um, yeah, it's great talking to you. It's not like yeah. I've been talking to you via text almost continuously <laughs> for the last like... Uh, it feels like um, like we're just hanging out on Zoom, and I'm yeah. like looking at. I don't have the the video playing on my Facebook because it would wreck me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, but I am I'm excited to see the chat and people familiar faces. Um, I do just want to say that um, with a consortium, you know the the more the merrier. So if you if you do join, if you have joined, um, feel free to spread the word. Let let other people know about it. That uh, maybe JD and I don't even know. Um, that's always been a rewarding thing about consortiums is I, I personally have gotten to meet so many um, really phenomenal performers who was like a friend of a friend of a friend. Right. So, um, you know, if, it, it's always great for, for these things to be, to share, be shared about um, text your buddy and get them involved too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm, ex I'm just, I'm really excited about this piece. It's, it's going to be good. Three movements, 15 minutes, choose your own adventure. Yeah, I guess we really didn't talk too much about the structure so far, but there's not a whole yeah. lot to talk about yet. There's not a whole lot written down. But yeah, the idea is, um, my very important question, are we going to play Mario Kart after this? I mean, we can. Um, we can, yeah, we, sure. We both have, I mean, we both have switches. Um, I might have to prize Susanna, my Susanna, which is another. <laughs> yeah. Both, both of our partners are named Susanna, and then we both have a small probably overweight brindle pug um there's a nice like alternate reality photo of both of them sitting with the the dogs at a yeah. brewery somewhere um yes we so actually actually i, I want to since we're still live and anthony i'm gonna make anthony wait for mario kart a little more so um i will share this idea about the piece that um really has no fleshed out concept right now but it's something i texted jd at like midnight one night and it just kind of hit me uh, that I want to somehow incorporate the word Brendel into the title of this piece and kind of inform the textures of um, of the piece. So like JD just said, both of our dogs are brindled, <laughs> uh, like the same exact brindle color, actually. Um, and there's just something like really, um, oh, the word's really interesting and um, the the texture of that color and the, the fur, you know, it's, it's just like a really... I think there's a lot of a lot there to draw from, which sounds crazy and insane, but um, that's how my brain works. So I get a lot of um, ideas from words and 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 visually interesting stuff. So you heard it here first. Maybe Brendel something in the title of this piece. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So um, if there are no other questions, again, if you have questions, even after the streams ended, um, I see there are about seven people watching, which is exciting. Um, feel free to leave those in the comments. We'll get back to them as soon as possible. And um, yeah, this has been fun. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. So I'll leave the uh, the link up. Oh, Justin Crossshore. Oh, we do have a question. Yes. Um, I missed these details. What instruments are going to be covered in this project? And what were the dates, co-commissioner deadline, and release of the work to said co-commissioners? So, oh, okay, we didn't talk about the deadline. So it will be what I'm calling the four big low brass instruments. Um, I guess they're all big right now. They're not all big, but uh, tenor trombone, bass trombone, bad. tuba, and euphonium. So kind of the standard for low brass instruments, um, you will be able to play this piece on. And like we've been talking about, choose your own adventure. Um, and then next question, what were the dates? of co The co-commissioner deadline is uh, June 1st. That will probably become July 1st. I need to check that. Yeah. 
let's say July 1st, um, and release of the work to the said commissioners September 1st. Awesome. Uh, I, I want to try to get it to everybody before. I, I know not everybody is uh, follows the academic care, uh, calendar. Um, I don't follow the academic calendar, um, but I know a lot of people who join this are um, professors and maybe students. So I want to make sure everybody has the piece before the fall semester starts. And as soon as you join and as soon as I start writing the piece, you'll be seeing pieces of the piece, <laughs> chunks of the piece as I write it. So it's not like you're going to get a piece you've never seen on September 1st. You'll get parts of the piece um as i write it and for feedback and for you to practice or whatever so try out what have you yeah awesome yeah and that's that's um i'm sure there are a lot of collaborative pianists in the world who uh will be thankful that they won't uh have something that just pops up out of the middle of nowhere that's yeah. another thing if um if anyone um who is a commissioner or wants to become a co-commissioner in this um feel free to get get your friends involved get your piano playing friends involved you know uh, we we all justin tyler and i all know cho long i don't know how grumpy cho long would be to get ro <laughs> roped into this immediately but she she's played and recorded my piece in spite of reason um and if she can deal with that she can deal with the way i write for piano now <laughs> i'm a much better uh composer <laughs> so <laughs> right. um, um and i i will also say um this consortium isn't limited to um, actual performers. If you are watching this and you don't play any of these instruments, but you want to support, you can still go to the link and um, join at the kind of supporter student level. Um, and you can still get your name on the score. Why not? So yeah. help create new music. We all like new music. Um, awesome. Well, if there are no more questions, uh, I'll give it about 30 seconds or so for that delay to uh, kick in. Um, I can tell uh, a few people, specifically one. Um, there we go. There's another one um, popping it out. Would you want to expand it to other instruments? Um, do you mean other low brass instruments, other, or just something like completely, you know, uh, kazoo? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, curious about um, the, the other, other instruments, because I, I, I feel like this could go either way with um, the solo part or the piano part, part being orchestrated, if you will. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's, that's actually, actually, you know, um, it, it is, is a question. question. Um, it is a question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. No, um, but uh, that's, that's, that's an, an interesting thing, because, uh, I mean, that's, you've definitely not been... Um, You've not, not been, been shy about, about doing that in the past. I know your piece Basalized very recently. recently. Um, I guess also in a way connected to this through title. Um, mm. But uh, that started out as a, uh, what was it, melodica and piano? Kind of a melodica, melodica. yeah. I, I can't, it's, it's like, like a, a re uh, recorder piano, I think is what it's called. Um, really funny, funny instrument, instrument, but also like a really, really beautiful instrument. instrument. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 so um, I'm, I'm not sure specifically what this question means, but I'll do my best to answer it. So um, I think it, it's hard to say because I think there's something, I mean, I'm a little biased maybe, but there's something special about low brass that allows for this kind of idea that we have of the choose your own adventure. Okay, I see now. Um, oh, rock and roll guitar. Yeah. So um I feel like if it, like, for, for example, if it was trumpet instead of low brass, I don't know if the choose your own adventure could, it could maybe, it could maybe work. Um, so the question is perhaps, or the answer is perhaps, um, perhaps it could be arranged for other instruments. More, more likely would be um, orchestrating the piano part in any way. Uh, in you know, whether that's solo plus, wind quintet, solo plus percussion ensemble, solo plus wind band. You know, that's something that um, JD and I, I have kind of talked about. Um, if like enough people join, that kind of justifies um, expanding the piece in that way. Um, but I mean, this idea, I 
I feel like we've come upon an idea that I'm not sure has been done that much. Um, this kind of choose your own adventure idea. So if not like making this piece playable on other instruments, like arranging it, um, maybe exploring this idea through other instruments. Hmm. Definitely, Definitely for sure. sure. Yeah. Well, well, there's, there's nothing, nothing saying either, um, as the brass players are wont to do. Um, there's nothing, nothing saying that if you're a bassoonist or if you're a cellist or a bassist or something like that, that you couldn't also um, play this. Because, because uh, again, you mentioned this earlier, it's not necessarily a, you know, a showcase for the individual abilities of each of these instruments. You're not going to have extended techniques all over the place. This is, we've talked about this, this is going to be something that is programmable on a recital that people aren't going to throw, you know, throw tomatoes at you for and things like that, <laughs> yeah. which I, I love that just as much as, probably more than the next person, unless you're the next person. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there's also nothing saying that. I mean, you think about the, the bass, or let's think about the tenor trombone. Um, the, the Barry sax could cover that entire range, um, almost the <laughs> entire range, the, the bassoon, the cello. Lots, Lots of different, different instruments, instruments can play this, you know. Um, and Jordan, I think, is the perfect person to ask this because George just did a senior recital and played a uh, better question, will it be a multiple class? Um, we have talked, yeah, I think, um, at least with Euphony and TC. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, I personally am hoping no one to a class because I'm not an artist, I'm a bonus. <laughs> But, but yeah, I, I think, think you could probably expect um, definitely bass clef, potentially tr tr treble, uh, B, or, uh, youth or brass band, trombone, tenor, or uh, treble clef, and uh, depending on it, maybe some tenor clef here and there. The, the, the treble, treble clef would, would be interesting. Um, I, haven't I haven't thought about, about that too much, much but... It, it might end up being like um, choose your own adventure, trouble club, lots of letters. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, so there's some, some there might be some limitations there, but I'm willing to to explore it. You know. Well, that's the thing too. I mean, if you you know, I'm just spitballing here. We're this is this is what this is for, right? We're live. <laughs> yeah, we're live. We're doing it live. <laughs> no, um, you know, if you have uh, trouble club, I mean. P flat treble clef that uh, you know your your brass band uh, contrabass tubas in the world, which I was one for a minute or two. Um, that that opens that up to them as well, um, which is a, a very cool thing. I mean, and I know you're you're very much about getting as much play as much bang for your buck as possible. So yeah, yeah, I, I want I want anyone who wants to play to be able to play it. Yeah. I mean that's that's the bottom line. But yeah, yeah I, uh, Jordan probably has this on his mind because out of all the pieces that he performed, I think there was one trouble piece. Um, lots of uh, lots of other arrangements and stealing from other things. So, anyway, yeah. well, awesome. Um, keep it open for another minute or another second or two. We'll kind of just uh, tread water here. We'll mark time, as it were. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, if, if anyone else has any questions, questions otherwise, we will wrap this up. God, I, I still have, I've not been in marching band for, I don't know how long I still have, like the, in, just the, uh, and I hear something, like, any kind of reference to any kind of marching band. Oh, now I'm kind of thinking about the right part. Hopefully no one just tunes into this part. <laughs> but they haven't been listening to everything else. They're just like, should we, should should we, we keep, keep the zoom open for, for Mario Kart? We, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep the, the link down at the bottom of the Mario Kart. Awesome. Seems, seems, like, seems like we're good. So awesome. I don't see any other questions. But yeah, yeah we, we can, can always come back to this if someone watches later. Um, you can, can reach us through our websites or Facebook message us. I think, I think all that works. Yeah, awesome. Well, Tyler, thank you for uh, taking time out of your schedule. And um, we'll wrap it up. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the chat and we'll get to those. Or send either of us an email. Or just better, just don't join the thing. You know, it's not that expensive, right? You know, if you, well, if you stop eating your avocado toast, millennials, um, you can afford it. I don't know if you ever had avocado toast. Um, oh, it's great. I love it. I don't like texture. Anyway, we'll get <laughs> off this. Um, but uh, it's been fun, 
and um, I'll leave the link up in case anyone is curious and wants to go check it out at the end. All right. Thank you all.